This is the third of the series Bon Voyage, which basically updates my A to Z as more film and video becomes available. There's quite a lot of old cine footage converted, most of it of reasonable quality, but there are two short items which, although poor film, I've kept in for interest's sake. The video footage has been filmed in Scrabster, Dover and Southampton, as well as off Dunnet Head. There's also video taken in the Aegean Sea and the Black Sea. Some of the video was taken at the p 175th anniversary, and there are two films available of the whole of that event. I trust you enjoy this episode. We start with Adonia. These pictures were taken on July the 3rd, 2012, when all seven of p os cruise ships sailed from Southampton in procession. She is seen here approaching Calshot. Adonia is the smallest of the p and fleet at 30,277 tons and was built in 2001 by Chantiers de Atlantique as R8 for Renaissance cruises. She became Minerva II in 2003, then a Royal Princess in 2007, before being transferred to Pierno in 2011. Aegean Odyssey, seen here in Ephesus, was launched as a Roro cargo ship, the Naras, in 1973. She has had several names since then. She was converted to a cruise ship, Aegean Dolphin, in 1988. She is 11,906 tons and was built by Santiero Naval Galats, Romania, being refitted in Parama, Greece. We first see Aida Kara in Dover. We can then pick her up as she passes Dunnet Head and the Old Man of Hoy. She's 38,557 tons and was launched in 1996 from the Caverna Massa Yard in Turku, Finland. Like all Aida ships, she is operated by Aida Cruises of Germany, now a part of the Carnival operation. Our next ship is the Aida Diva of 69,203 tons she started her cruising in 2007 and was built by the May Yards in Papenburg, Germany. Amelia is also filmed off Dunnet Head. She was built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries as the Asuka and launched in 2006. She is operated by Phoenix Racing.
This is the fourth Arcadia for P&O. She's 83,781 tons and was built in 2005 by Fincantieri at Margara. For a large cruise ship, she has remarkably beautiful lines. She's seen here coming in to dock in Southampton. We can watch Arcadia now as she passes us off Calshot. Yet another shot of a ship off Dunnet Head, this time the Arian, which is 5,888 tons. She was built in 1965 as the Eastra and has had several names since then. She became Arian in 1999. She was built in Yugoslavia at the Brodo Gadlis Yards. Aurora is seen here departing Piraeus late October 2012. She is 76,152 tons and started operating as a cruise ship for Piano in 2000. She was built by Fincantieri at their Magara yards in Italy. We now have a clip of old cine film converted. The ship is the Abba Bechan of 16,631 tons, built for the Soviet Union in 1975 by Wartzilla Turku, Finland. She's seen here departing from New York in 1979. She'll soon be joined by the Rotterdam Oceanic and Staten Dam in a most impressive procession. Here we see Azura of 115,055 tons. She's passing the Trinity House vessel Patricia as part of the p 175th year celebration on the 3rd of July 2012. Although the day was dull and drizzly, the spectacle was magnificent. This was filmed from on board SS Shieldall. Azura started her cruising with p in 2010 and was built by Fincantieri 
in Malford, Coney, Italy. A short clip of the Balmoral Castle of Union Castle. She was 13,361 tons and was built in 1909. She served as a troop ship in the First World War. Fred Olson's Black Watch, seen here departing Dover in August 2012. Black Watch started life in 1972 as Royal Viking Star. She's 28,613 tons and was built by Wotzilla in Finland. In 1991, she was named Westwood. In 1994, she became the Star Odyssey and then she was purchased in 1996 by Fred Olsen and renamed Black Watch. Boudicca was built as Royal Viking Sky, a sister to Royal Viking Star. She's 28,372 tons, and like her sister, was built by Wartzilla in Finland and started life in 1973. In 1984, she became Sunward. In 92, Burke Queen, and in the same year, she was renamed Golden Princess. Then, in 2004, Grand Latino, before joining the Fred Olsen fleet and rejoining her sister as Boudicca in 2005. Now we have some old converted film of Canberra. The pictures are a little bit too light, affected by age. However, they depict her entering the Miraflores lock in the Panama Canal and also the inside of the control tower of that lock. Unusual and historic. We can watch now as the gates are closed once the great liner has entered the chamber. Canberra started her service in 1961. She was 41,915 tons and was built by Harland and Wolfe in Belfast. The following clips of Canberra were taken between 1976 and 1978, where we see her at anchor. Shots taken in Rio de Janeiro and other ports in South America. Canberra was scrapped in 1997. Caribbean Princess is 112,894 tons and started service in 2004. She was built by Vincanti Airy in Montefalcone, Italy. She's seen here, pictured from Dunnet Head passing the Orkneys.
The Carmania was built for Cunard by Brown on Clydebank. She was launched in 1954 as the Saxonia. She was later converted for cruising and renamed Carmania. In 1973, she was acquired for the Soviet state and was renamed Leonid Serbanov, being scrapped in 1999. We will see her later. We now see celebrity Equinox docked in Istanbul. She was built by Jos L. Mayer in Pattenburg. She came into service in 2009 and is 121,873 tons. The Discovery was built in 1971 by Reinstall Nordsberg Emden as Island Adventure. She's 20,216 tons. She became Island Princess in 1972 and featured as one of the love boats on television. In 1999, she became Hyundai Punkat and then in 2001, Platinum, before being renamed Discovery in 2004. She's seen here in the Black Sea on her last voyage for Voyages of Discovery in October 2012. Although on this last voyage she appeared very tired, she is nonetheless an exceptionally well-designed ship, particularly on the interior. She left Istanbul on the 30th of October, sailing for Genoa where she will be given a major refit before joining Marco Polo and she will still be named Discovery in a new joint venture offering a different sort of cruise possibly directed at younger people. Some wonderful old black and white film taken before the war of the troop ship Dorsetshire as she enters Suez. She was launched in the 1920s and served until 1954. She was 7,450 tons. Elenus, built as Lure Line for Matson Lines, was launched in 1932 at the Bethlehem SB Corp Yards in the USA. She was just over 18,000 tons. In 1954 she became Homeric and in 1963 Elenus, and she was scrapped in 1980. Formos was 9,957 tons and served between 1921 and 1953. She was seized by the Argentinians in the war and handed back in 1946. France was built by Penhoe at St. Nazaire in France and served on the Atlantic trade. She became Norway for Norwegian Cruise Lines and was taken out of service in 2011. We see Hamburg approaching Yalta in the Black Sea in 2012. She is 15,067 tons and was built by Wismar in Germany as the Columbus. She was launched in 1997 and was renamed Hamburg in 2012.
Island Sky was built in 1992 as Renaissance 8. She was renamed Renai 2 in 2001 and then Island Sky in 2004. She was built by Noevi Cantieri Poigna in Italy and is also seen approaching Yalta in October 2012. Built by Deutsches Werf Hamburg as Zion in 1956, Ithaca was 9,855 tons. In 1966, she was renamed Amelia de Mello. Then in 1972, Ithaca. And then in 1979, Dolphin, before reverting to Ithaca. She's seen here in a Mediterranean port. The Lostral is seen here tied up in Istanbul. We only get a view from her side. She was launched in 2011 and is 10,944 tons. She's operated by Companion de Il du Ponant. Built by Chantier de Atlantique, Cruising since 1995, the legend of the seas is 69,130 tons. We saw this ship earlier as the Kamania. Originally launched in 1954 as a Saxonia for Cunard, she was converted for cruising in 1962 and renamed Kamania before being purchased for the Soviets in 1973 and renamed Leonid Sobinov. She was withdrawn from service in 1999. She's seen here in Lisbon in the late 1970s. A very quick shot of the Landaff Castle of 10,609 tons built by Barclay Curl and Company for Union Castle. During the war, she served as a hospital ship, returning to service in 1947. The Marco Polo is 22,080 tons. She was originally the Alexander Pushkin when launched in 1965 and became Marco Polo for the New Orient Line in 1991. She now cruises for Cruise and Maritime Greece and will be joined shortly by Discovery in a new venture. She was built by Matthias Thiessen left in Visma.
the Matson liner Matsonia is pictured here leaving port. She was 17,226 tons and was originally called Malola when launched in 1927. She was renamed Matsonia in 1938. Built by William Cramp of Philadelphia, she had a long life serving towards her later years as Atlantic and Queen Frederica. We see Multan entering Suez post-war. She was built by Harland and Wolf for P&O and entered service in 1923. In 1939 she became an armed merchant cruiser and then in 1941 to 47 a troop ship. After the war she was refitted and used with her sister Maloya taking immigrants to Australia. We now have three MSC ships, starting with the MSC Lyrica of 59,058 tons. She was built by Saint-Pierre de Atlantique and she came into service in the year 2003. She is seen here passing Dunnet Head. MSC Opera is the next, seen here leaving Southampton and later in Odessa. The Opera is 59,058 tons and was also built by Chantier de Atlantique a year after the Lyrica, coming into service in 2004. The last of the three is MSC Orchestra, a good deal bigger than the other two, at 92,409 tons. Again, Chantiers de Atlantique were her builders. She came into service in 2007 and is pictured here in Istanbul in October 2012.
at 138,279 tons, the Navigator of the Seas is the largest of the ships shown in this film. She's pictured in Ephesus in 2012. She was built in the Caverna Massa Yard. She started cruising in 2006. I'm well aware of the quality of the next bit of film, but the subject is extraordinary. The troop ship Navassa is coaling in Suez. Just look at those rickety planks. Health and safety, oh dear. Navassa was 9,071 tons and served from 1913 to 1941. She was a passenger ship originally for a year, then a troop ship reverting to the passenger trade between 1919 and 1925. Then again she took up trooping and school trips before ending her career as a trooper. The Northern Star of 24,733 tons was built by Vickers Armstrongs for Shaw, Sowell and Albion line. She was launched in 1961 and broken up in 1974. Another arrival in Istanbul in October 2012 was NCL's Norwegian Spirit of 75,338 tons. She was originally called Superstar Leo when launched in 1998 and then she became Norwegian Spirit when taken over by NCL in 2004. She was built by Caverna Massa. Pianos Oceana is 77,499 tons and came into service in 2000. We last saw her leaving Madeira in February 2012 and here she is again now in July 2012 having left Southampton and sailing past Calshot during Pianos 175th anniversary. Ocean Counters, seen here leaving Scratchler, is 16,795,000 ,000 tons. She started life as Cunard Countess way back in 1976, having been built by Burmeister and Wayne. She's had eight different names. She's now operated by Cruise and Maritime Voyages. to go through those names. As I said, she started as Cunard Countess in 96. In 1998, she was a Wani Dream. In 2001, Olympic Countess. In 2004, Olympia Countess. In 2005, Ocean Countess. In 2006, Lily Marlene. And in 2007, 
Ocean Countess, and then in the same year, Ruby, before reverting to Ocean Countess. Another small ship, this time very small, is the Ocean Nova of 2,183 tonnes, also seen leaving Scrabster. She's operated by Quark Expeditions. She started life as the Sarpic Ituk, and then in 2007 she became Ocean Nova. She was built by Orskov, in Denmark. This is old film of Homelines Oceanic leaving New York in 1979. She was 27,645 tons and built by Cantieri Reunited Malfonconi, Italy. She was launched in 1963. In 1985 she became Starship Oceanic and then the Big Red Boat won. She ended her career from 2009 to 2012 as Peace Boat. From Dunnet Head we can watch Ocean Princess. Ocean Princess was 30,277 tons, originally launched in 2002 for Renaissance as R4, she started her career in 2003 as the Tahitian Princess, and in 2009 she was renamed Ocean Princess, she was built by Chanteurs d'Atlantique. We can watch her now as she passes the old man of Hoy. Some more old film, this time of the Orient liner Orford in the 1930s. Orford was built by Vickers Barrow and completed in 1928. She was 19,941 tons, one of the five Orient liners of 20,000 tons built to replace World War I losses. She herself was lost 
in the Second World War. The second ship of this name, Oriana, started service for Pirno in 1995. She's 69,153 tons and was built by Joss L. Mayer of Papenburg, Germany. We see her here with Azura in the background in July 2012. She's lining up to pass the Trinity House vessel Patricia as part of the 175th anniversary of p &O. Full coverage of this event is available on two separate DVDs. The Union Castle liner Pendennis Castle is seen here tied up in Southampton. She was built by Harland and Wolfe and completed in 1957. She was 28,582 tons and was eventually scrapped in 1976. Princess Daphne was originally built as the cargo ship Port Sydney by Swan Hunter. In 1972 she was converted to a cruise ship called Agrotti Express and has since been named Daphne, Switzerland, Ocean Odyssey and Ocean Monarch before being renamed Princess Daphne in 2008. We now have some rather poor converted cine film of QE2 leaving Southampton. It's included because it shows her in the livery that was originally chosen. She started service in 1964 was built by Brown on Clydebank and was 65,863 tons. She's currently laid up. We see the quest for adventure approaching the old man of Hoy. She's 18,591 tons and was launched in 1981 and built by Hauptstadt Deutsche Welle Hamburg as the Astor. In 1985 she was renamed Arconia and in 2007 Astoria, in 2010 Saga Pearl II and she now sails as the quest for adventure. can watch as Rotterdam passes Canberra as she sails out of New York in 1979. She's 38,645 tons. She was built by Rotterdamska DD and launched in 1958 for Holland America. She's now preserved as a floating hotel in Rotterdam. Saga Ruby started life as the Vista Fjord in 1973. She's 24,497 tons and was built by Swan Hunter. 
in 1999, she was renamed Coronia until being purchased by Saga in 2004 and named Saga Ruby. At the time of making this film, we understand that she will shortly be withdrawn from service. This film was shot on a wide screen camera and shows her leaving Dover in the summer of 2010. I filmed Saga Sapphire as she entered Dover in August 2012. She's 37,301 tons and commenced service in 1981 as the Europa. In 1998, she was named Superstar Europe. In 2000, Superstar Ares. In 2003, Ocean Voyager. And then in 2008, Blue de France. She started service with Saga in 2012 as Saga Safa. She was built by Bremer Vulcan Vesak.
now the last of those liners leaving New York in 1979. Staten Dam, also built for Holland America, was completed in 1956. She was built by Wolfen and Feyenoord and was 24,294 tons. She was scrapped in 2004. A little obscured, we see Uganda at sea. She was a troop ship, then became very popular as a school ship in the 70s before being taken up again and serving in the Falklands War. She was launched in 1952 and was 14,430 tons, built by Barclay Curl and Company for British India, and sank on her way to the scrapyard in 1992. Another of P&O's ships celebrating their 175th anniversary, we see Ventura of 116,000 tons off Calshot. She was completed in 2008 and built by Fincantieri Malfalcone. Our last ship in part three of Bon Voyage is the Vision of the Seas of 78,340 tons, launched in 1999 and built by Chantiers d'Atlantique. She is also seen off Dunnet Head. Well, we come to the end now and we trust you've enjoyed this film and look forward now to seeing you again when we make part four.